Okay, hello there. Dr. Mintz here. This is a trauma case. Here's a quick overview. See anything funny? Not funny. Bad. Okay. Well, I think you've noticed that the right kidney is mush and basically is not enhancing at all. That's very abnormal. So in the setting of trauma, renal lacerations are common, which would be localized little defects, usually with some perirenal hemorrhage. This kidney here looks fine. I don't see a laceration here. Sometimes you can have an ex a, a shattered kidney where there are multiple fragments and it's just ex extremely kind of blown up almost. Multiple fragments and pieces that are just uh, representative of a severe trauma to the kidney. Whereas in this, in this case, the right kidney, you really don't see anything enhancing there. Plus it kind of looks kind of small and flat. What this represents is a renal vascular injury. It means, or a renal pedicle injury. It means that this area here, the renal pedicle, kind of the hilum and the vascular attachments have been ripped. So instead of just lacerating and contusing the kidney itself, the trauma pulls on the kidney and tears, creates a laceration force through the renal pedicle and devascularizes the kidney. Well, that's a bad thing for a kidney, needless to say, but it also poses a problem because those vessels that you have torn asunder may continue to hemorrhage. So a renal vascular injury basically means that the patient is going to lose that kidney and we'll have to look for other injuries in this area as well. So just looking over this right now, if you follow, you see how nice and smooth most of the margin of the liver here is? See how it looks a little regular, irregular there? That's abnormal. See that little divot right here? That's abnormal. And of course you have rib fractures on both sides. You see how this contour here does not look continuous? That's abnormal. That's a liver injury even here. See how this, instead of being convex here, is slightly concave right there? That's a traumatic abnormality to the liver. And it's not surprising because we know there was a great deal of force here. Ribs were fractured. The kidney was ripped away from its vascular pedicle and devascularize. Now what do you think the attenuation is going to be of this fluid here? Here we are in the retroperitoneal area, so this is perirenal space and there's obviously some hemorrhage there. Maybe it's torn and has extended into the peritoneal space or maybe this is blood from the liver. But in fact it has a, a fairly high attenuation and Let's see what we get here. About 40 Hounsfield units, so that looks like blood. So it's hemoperitoneum. That could be coming from the liver. Probably at least partly is. Always remember to look for active extravasation of contrast. Uh, and you know, you know about the uh, sentinel clot. I'm not sure if perhaps we have something like that here. Okay, let's focus on the kidney now. Look around here. You have the aorta and renal vein on that side, renal artery and renal vein. Where's the renal artery on the right side? Right here. And it kind of goes off there. Whoa, that's a far cry from the renal hilum here. So we need to be very vigilant about any possible active extravasation in this area. Is this, for example, is this active extravasation or is it just branching renal 
vessels. Hard to say. So in this case, they went ahead and did some delayed views, I believe. Let's see, we go up there. Up oh, right here. See that higher attenuation right in there? See it right there? That's suspicious. Now, usually active extravasation is going to be a lot more prominent than that. Aha! Uh -huh. Look at this. You see that? That's higher attenuation. This looks like active extravasation. And remember where we saw the renal vessels coming over here. So they're kind of heading over this way. And now you're seeing high attenuation where we didn't before. We've given it a little more time for blood to leak out, for hemorrhage to continue. And since the blood is opacified with contrast to show us hemorrhage in this area. And this looks like there's a communication, that there's an actual laceration through the uh, retroperitoneal space from the intraperitoneal space. So there's probably some communication here, and this active extravasation may actually be spilling out of the retroperitoneum into the peritoneal cavity. Okay, so this is subtle. There's a lot of artifact here, but right here, that's high attenuation. You see how it kind of looks like the attenuation of vessels there and then this splotchy kind of high attenuation that we really didn't see on the initial set of images. Now, often it'll be much more clear than that. It'll be IV contrast attenuation that is more clear and coalescent, stands out more. But this is a relatively subtle example of renal vascular injury, of renal, renal pedicle injury with active extravasation of contrast retroperitoneal hematoma, devascularized kidney, and intraperitoneal hemorrhage, which is certainly partly reflective of a hepatic injury, but it could also reflect some communication <clears throat> between the retroperitoneal space and the intraperitoneal space. And the presence of this contrast extravasation right there near the interface between the two compartments is fairly suspicious. Always go to your coronals, and sometimes sagittals too, but coronals sometimes give you a different perspective on things and make things that were maybe subtle on one view a little more conspicuous. And let's zoom in here a little bit more. So you know what we're looking for. We're looking for, okay, now this looks like the, we're looking for active extravasation. This looks like that the renal pedicle, some of the renal vessels, and so we'd expect to see some extravasation in here. Look at how you can even see how the attenuation here looks greater, 44 Hounsfield units, than even the attenuation here. Just looking at it, you can see that it's denser here. <clears throat> that suggests there is some active extravasation coming from the liver itself. You see what I mean? Because this blood would be coming from the kidney, possibly. And so this, this just tells us that there is some bleeding from the, the liver. Although it's not, even though it's high, higher attenuation, it's not actually active extravasation. We are not seeing extravasation of contrast material. Even though contrast material may be contributing to that density, you need to see a localized collection of contrast that stands apart from the attenuation of other blood. Okay, look at this. This is the interior vena cava. Look how flat it is. There's been blood loss. See, when you have blood loss like that, there's just lo less blood in the vascular compartment. All right, I think this is a little bit later and here again we see this laceration to the posterior part of the liver. This spleen has probably seen better days too. Hard to tell. They, there's a lot of artifact there. And the blood fluid around it could well be just from the liver and other injuries. But 
might be a little worried about that spleen. Doesn't look that sharp. But going down a little bit, let's see what we have here. And okay, now here are those vessels. You see renal vein and renal arterial branches in that area. And they're still opacified. They are dense, denser than blood over here even because they have IV contrast. And let's see if there's any active extravasation. I don't really see it there. I don't see any active extravasation right in this area, and that's where you should be looking. Let's see, we've got one more here. Let's see if this illuminates it at all. Not really. Oh, there, that looks, this looks like some active extravasation. That does look like it. I think we have active extravasation. Oh, yes, look at this, this splotch there, this splotch there. That looks like active extravasation. You see what I mean? It's, it's contrast opacified blood squirting into a hematoma in the retroperitoneal space. This is a bad looking trauma case. This is pretty bad. And I think there was a lumbar spine fracture. There you can see. See right here? That's off to the side farther lateral than the vessels themselves. So that looks like a renal vascular injury. Mm, always look at the spine. Important to pick up anything in terms of a spinal fracture, of course. Critical. And we have all these rib fractures, so we have pulmonary contusion, presumably. A little bit of a pneumothorax. You see the air outlining the margin of the lung there. Even this little bit of air here is pneumothorax. Let's see what this shows us here. There. You get a feeling of this higher attenuation area right there just kind of accumulating, especially right here. Even though you have some beam hardening artifact, I want you to see that. It's subtle. There'll be clearer cases than that. But this little splotch here and here and here do look suspicious for active extravasation. Aha, this. That's active extravasation. That's not a vessel. That's clearly not a vessel. And yet it's, it's certainly, look at that, that's 67 Hounsfield units compared with 35, 45 here. So that just points out that this is active extravasation because it's denser than blood should be. Blood will usually fall in the 40 to 50 range at most, and this is above that. So important finding, renal vascular pedicle injury with active extravasation of contrast. And it happens to also have a hepatic laceration.